All right, so before we start this video, I just have a quick announcement to make. Blue, green, yellow, orange, red. hit. Yeah. What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic and this is a build that uh, I streamed and I streamed making it and it took about five hours of streaming uh, and it's a very very large build with a lot of logic and this is actually the most logic I've ever used in a single creation and it's to do something really really simple and it's a secret code generating machine, kind of like uh, the Enigma machine. So it's got a series of encryptors and decryptors so you can write secret messages like the one I gave you there at the very beginning. And back in the days of the earlier world wars, uh, it was very difficult to send encrypted messages because anybody could pick up the transmission as you would send it over the radio. And so what they ended up doing is they ended up encrypting them. The, the Germans used what's called the Enigma machine. And to make it simply, it was basically a, a sort of typewriter where you would type a letter and depending on the combination of dials and the plug board on the front, it would take that one letter and convert it to a different letter. Uh, and there were billions and billions and billions of combinations uh, that the Enigma could could have. So it was really difficult code to crack. So every time you were listening to the radio, you would just hear this gibberish code and you wouldn't really know what it is unless you were able to decrypt it. So this one, not as complicated as the original Enigma machine. It has five dials on it. Uh, and each dial has eight different settings, which gives you a total of 32,768 combinations, I believe, uh, if I've done my math correctly. So it's not nearly as complicated as the Enigma machine uh, in, in real life, but it is still an awesome secret code machine, which basically makes it impossible to crack. So let's look at a really simple example of this. Let's say you wanted to send your friend uh, a message. Let's say you wanted to send your friend a message that said, hi, I'm con. Let's say that's that's going to be our message. So the first thing you would you would have to do, and the way they did this back in the day is they had, uh, I believe it was a series of code books. And if you're interested in this, I encourage you to go look it up. It's a really fascinating piece of history. But they'd have code books, and the combination of dials would change on the daily basis, I believe. So every morning they would change the combination of dials, and all the officers would know what the correct combination was. But let's say our combination. Uh, in this case, we're going to keep that other combination for later, but let's say our combination is, uh, let's go black, and then let's go red, and then let's go yellow, and then let's go uh, blue, and then let's go white. So this is a, uh, a rainbow colored dial, so let's go black initially on the first one here. So we just gotta, we just gotta kind of hit the button once every once every second and then it'll let you go. So this would be our code combination per se. So this is one possible combination of 32,000 other possible combinations. So now we start writing our message. So we've got this switch here. This switch switches it between the two different modes. So on one side, you're encrypting it. On the other side, you're decrypting it. It really doesn't matter uh, which way you have it. Uh, to be honest, you can have it turned on or off because either way, it's just going to reverse when you flick the switch. So in the meantime, we're going to start with it on the off position. So we type H and you see as we type H, the letter K lights up so we can write down K. And then as we type I, oops, as we type I, the next letter lights up and that's W. So we've got K, W and the high I'm, so that would also be a W. And then the M, so we got to turn off the I here, put the M lights up U, so the M becomes U, okay, and then the K becomes an O, okay, and then the A becomes a B, and then the N becomes a Y. So we could send somebody the message KWWUOBY, and if they didn't know those color settings, it wouldn't work. And let's let's show you really quickly how, how we can prove that. So if we take even one dial, just the middle dial, so the green, and now this middle dial is no longer the yellow that it's supposed to be, and now let's try typing this message back in. So let's switch the modes to decryption mode, and, uh, and let's press the first letter, which was K. And this tells us S. So now the message is S. 
And if we go to the second letter, which is W, uh, the W gives us a P. So we've got SP, and then the second W there gives us another P. And then the U, we'll just, uh, oops, we'll just activate the U and we'll turn this off. Okay, so the U gives us a G. Okay, and then we go to the O. J, the O gives us a J. Okay, and then we go to the B, and the B gives us a B, which there, my version of this allows for duplicate letters, like a letter to become itself. It can happen depending on the combinations you have. Obviously, I didn't test every single one of the 32,000 combinations. Uh, I know the machine works, and, and I'll explain how I know that in a little bit, but uh, I, I didn't test all the combinations. And then the Y becomes a U. So you can see here, if we have the wrong code, this K-W-W-U-O-B-Y becomes S-P-P-G-J-B-U, which is also complete and total gibberish. And this was really the simplest way to encrypt a message and send it across. So let's put the combination back in here and we'll restore the original message. So we'll keep it in decryption mode, but just to show that this does work, you'll see there we type in the K, we get the H. We type in the W, we should get an I. We do get the I. And then of course we type in the U and we get an M. And we've got the M down here. And then we type in an O and we should get a K. And we type in a B and we should get an A. And we type in a Y and we should get an N. And you can see there, just like that, by having the right combination, we can restore the original message. Why it took so much logic, uh, you might be wondering. If we, if we look at it on the blueprints, we look at the parts, um, we have 4,951 logic gates. Now, believe it or not, the logic gates are actually just really jumbling the symbols. So you can see we've got these individual stacks. Now, half of the machine is the encryption, and the other half is the decryption. So the reason we had to do it this way is in scrap mechanic, logic can only flow through the direction in one direction. So these are sort of not identical setups, but they're reversed setups. So for example, uh, each one of these has eight layers to represent the eight layers of the, uh, the dials here. And if we look at this one, as we light up, let's say we put down a letter, let's put down the letter U uh, and let's put it on the regular encryption mode. So you can see here we have U lit up. And now I did leave this as glass, um, but honestly, it really doesn't matter because still without the dial positions, you can see where the letters are swapping, but it's not going to really give you much away. You could, of course, cover this up, uh, but regardless, even if you had the machine without the combination, it's, it's still next to impossible to find, even if you know where all the swaps are going. So you can see on the whatever layer, the white layer, U would swap to B, and then the B gets passed through the next one, which means this one on the blue layer swaps B to Z, and then this one gets Z, and on Z on the yellow layer passes Z back to B, and then B on the red layer passes it to, what is that? V, I think? Z, X, Z, Y, X, W, V, U, oh no, U. And then U passes, that's a very interesting one. Then you pass it back to F on this original uh, black layer here. And so that chain, each one of these stacks is really just gates that I took a random number sequencer and I swapped connections. And so in these connections are all really just picked. So this one goes, feeds in here, goes across and comes out here. And when you change one of these dials, that changes where the swap is happening. So this was the issue. I, I streamed this, it took a long, long time to build and lay this all out. And then when I was finally done, it didn't work. And uh, a few of you mentioned in the comments why it might not work. And I'm pretty sure one of you was correct, but the issue was I had originally hooked them up in pairs this way. So we have encryptors one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and this one is decryptors five, four, three, two, one. So you have to hook them up in reverse. And the reason is really quite simple. If you look at this one, for example, this first dial, the black dial, it will actually affect this encryptor way over here. Uh, and, and what happens is if you, if you think about it this way, if this one swaps U to A as the first swap, then this one, which is the new first swap, has to swap A to U. So they have to be connected diagonally with the three in the middle connected the same. Uh, and that's just to keep the order properly when you're encrypting and decrypting. And that's why it didn't work in the stream. And once I figured that out, I swapped the controls around. And so you can see these ones hook up one, two, three, four, five in a line. And you can't really tell, but the other ones hook up kind of offset. So even if you know all the swap combinations, again, good luck trying to decode a message.
with only 32,000 combinations. We're not quite as complicated as the Enigma, and we are missing some features too, like the plug board and the interchangeable dials. And uh, the dials, I believe, on Enigma had numbers 0 through 26 or 1 through 26 or something like that. I, I'm not sure, but I definitely know they weren't just up to 8. So there were definitely a lot more combinations. So even though you can see all the logic gates down here, uh, you know, without this code combination, it's very, very difficult to crack. Each stack has 208 swap combinations. Uh, and so you'd have 208 for each of these stacks, plus then 208 on each of the encrypt uh, decryptors as well. So if you want to try and figure it out, go nuts. Uh, you can try and figure out all 208 combinations, but then you also have to figure out the combinations of combinations. So this letter swaps it, and then this 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 swaps it. So it's not like you can just pass A all the way through and swap it once at the end. You have to swap it at every individual stage and, uh, and somehow get back to the original message. Very simple principle, all we're doing is swapping which letter is connected to which light, and at the end of the day, each switch really is just turning on one light. That's all you're doing. We're just making a single wire circuit through this giant mass of AND gates, which determines uh, which circuit to connect. But anyways, let's go back to that original message, and we'll decode that and see what exactly I was talking about. So this uh, original message is blue, green, yellow, orange, red all right so let's switch it again to decryption mode and again like i said uh encryption decryption doesn't matter now if you do download this on the workshop i will post in the workshop description it does use the scrap letters mod obviously to uh, to get these nice little standout letters but other than that it is mod free and completely done in vanilla so let's see here the message was j first now i'm not gonna say what the message is i'm just gonna have it appear on the screen so we've got j turns to h And I'll see y'all next time.